Hey everyone, this is Vinny from Ari. In this video, I'm gonna briefly go over how to properly use snapping in 3ds Max. So you can access your snap toggles in your toolbar up here. It'll have a number and a magnet. Now your number might be different than mine, but if you click and hold down on your snaps toggle, you'll see you'll get these three options for two, 2.5 and three. And those are gonna represent 2D space, 2.5D space and 3D space, which we'll talk about shortly. But you can just simply press that button to turn on your snaps or you can press s on your keyboard to toggle snaps on and off you can also right click on your snaps toggle to get some more information including changing your type of snapping as well as some other options we're going to talk about shortly so i've broken this video down into three quick categories which we're going to go over so the first is going to be 3d snapping space and the differences between them then we're going to go over snapping types, what they are, and how to change them. And then finally, we're going to go over how to properly use axes constraints with snapping. So let's just jump right into our first category, which is 3D snap space. So as I mentioned a second ago, there are three different snapping spaces, 2D, 2.5D, and 3D, and they all each serve their own individual purpose. So let's just start with 2D snapping space. Now this one's pretty straightforward. This is going to constrain your snapping to a flat 2 D plane. So I have these two planes here and they are both at zero on my Y axis. So 2D snapping responds to whatever axis you're looking through. So right now, because I'm in front view, I'm looking through my Y axis. So these are flat on my Y axis. They don't have to be perfectly at zero as long as they are on the same plane of my Y axis here. So I can drag these two back together like this. And for example, then I could grab turning on my snaps here, making sure I'm on 2D. I could grab a vertex here and drag it over and snap just like that. Also to mention, I am currently using vertex and midpoint snapping. So I can snap these around. I can also use this for object creation. So if I shift and drag here with a snaps toggle on and I can snap this new object to a vertex and just make this a copy. And then I zero all these objects out on my Y axis. The reason for that is because new object creation happens at the grid points when using 2D snapping. I can then drag out a plane from corner to corner here and create a new object just like that. So that's 2D snapping. Now let's just talk about 2.5D snapping. So I'm just gonna unfreeze all my objects here and isolate these ones. So 2.5D snapping is gonna be similar to 2D snapping in that I can grab an object in a orthographic view and snap them together just like this. Let me just turn on 2.5D by clicking holding and clicking the 2.5 there. I can snap this like this. And what you're going to see, it's not going to snap directly on top of that. What 2.5D snapping allows me to do is have objects on different planes through the axis of which I'm viewing. So right now, this plane is at the zero point on my Y axis, and this one is quite a bit further back. But I can still snap this one to the one behind it visually in my front viewport. And that's going to snap to that object in 2.5D. And this goes the same for object creation. So what I could do is say, for example, grab this over here and I can create a plane. And this is gonna create flat on my grid. So at the zero point on my Y axis. So if I drag this one back a little bit, so they're not the same. And then I can re-snap that just like this here, grabbing this, snapping there. Now, if I create a plane, it's gonna create flat on my grid, but I can use these objects as snapping guides. So you'll see right there, that's going to create flat on my grid at zero on my Y axis, but it's going to use those two objects behind it as reference for that snap. Now, this is really convenient when using drawings to snap to. So for example, I have this basic drawing of a window that's slightly offset on my Y axis. And what I can do is do the same thing of creating a plane and dragging it out using that spline drawing as a snapping guideline. And that, of course, is going to be created at the zero point on my Y axis. And I can even do some further snapping there. So the benefit of 2.5D snapping is I can create objects flat on my grid and use other objects as reference points. Finally, let's just talk about 3D snapping, which is exactly what it sounds like. We can grab an object anywhere in 3D space. So let's just change to 3D snapping here. Let's say I grab this midpoint on this plane. I can snap to any of these vertices in 3D space, just like this, or of course, any of these midpoints. Now, the benefit of 3D snaps is I'm snapping directly to this object. So for example, we have this rectangle here and that's sitting a bit off my Y axis. So if I wanted to make this 
into a box, what I could first do is draw out a rectangle in front of it, flat on my grid, using 2.5D snapping. And so let me just draw out a rectangle here. Okay, and now if I wanted to connect all these points together, I could use my line and draw it like this. But if you're paying attention, you'll notice I'm still in 2.5D snapping, so this connection is actually an illusion as those points are being created flat on my grid and not exactly on my vertices here. So I can just delete those and then switch to 3D snaps. And then what I can do is directly click on these vertices and snap these together. So clicking here, that's going to snap like that. And then we could just attach these all and weld those vertices together just like that. So that's going to be the difference between 2, 2.5, and 3D space. Now I just want to move on to quickly talking about snapping types. So again, you can access your snapping types by right-clicking on your snaps toggle. And that's going to bring you this list of different snaps you can choose from. So right now you can see I have vertex and midpoint checked on. So those are the two types of snapping I can work with currently. I can check any of these on and work with them all at the same time. So for example, a common one is grid points. If I were to check that on and just turn on my grid, I can drag out a rectangle that snaps to that grid just like that. So just to demonstrate two of those snapping types, vertices snapping is exactly what it sounds like. We just did a few examples where we have this box here. And what I'm doing is hovering over that vertice. In this case, I want to be in 3D space, watching that turn yellow with this particular crosshair. So each of the different types of snapping have a different representation. So the vertice is going to be this cross here. And the midpoint is going to be this box, the slash through it right through the center of my edge. So what I can do then is just draw these out like this, clicking on my vertice, and then clicking on the other vertice, waiting for that to turn green. And then it will register as a snap, just like that. So this is also going to work with your edit poly modifier. And right now I'm going to demonstrate midpoints with my edit poly modifier. So I'm just going to turn off grid points for now, because you can see that's pretty confusing as I move this around. I'm basically snapping to every grid point there. And then what I can do is click on my create button. And what that's going to allow me to do is click from vertice to midpoint to midpoint to vertice and then back again. And then I'll have a new face created. And I can just flip that around. And if I wanted to, I could select these edges, add in some edge loops, and then just weld these all together. And I'll get this new face right in the middle. And that was simply by snapping to that midpoint there. And you can see there's many ways of doing things. So alternatively, I could have cut an edge in there and then snap to that vertice instead. Okay, so that's going to cover the different types of snapping types. Again, you're just going to go through and select the ones that you want. I'm not going to be demonstrating them all in this video, but I'd recommend exploring all the different various types. I wouldn't recommend turning on a lot at one time because the result is that, as you can see, I am going to get a lot of different things I can snap to at once. So it's very hard to find the particular thing I want to snap to and from. So I'm just going to go back to vertex and midpoint here. And then we're going to talk about axis constraints. So you'll notice when I click on a pair of vertices with my snap turns on, and I try to grab on my Z axis to move these up to snap them to this object here, you notice that my objects are moving freeform in 3D space. That's because by default, snaps do not constrain to a particular axis. And you can enable this by going into your options tab on your snap settings and just click on enable axis constraint. And what this is going to allow you to do is select which axis you want to snap to by clicking on the gizmo. In this case, either Z or X here. You also have the axis constraint toolbar, which you can open up by right clicking on your toolbar here and just checking on axis constraint. And you can switch through X, Y, and Z here. Also your hotkey F5, F6, and F7 for X, Y, and Z. And once I have the axes that I want, in this case, my Z axes, I can click on any of these vertices and snap them right here. Now, the real benefit of this is if I have two different heights here with my vertices or two different positions, what I can then do is select which vertice I want to snap to this edge while moving all of these at the same time. So I can grab this one here. And then I can snap this one in particular constrained again to the Z axis. And then I can drag this one up, for example, and snap it that way. So the hotkey to turn axis constraints on and off is going to be Alt D on your keyboard. You can see that toggles on this X, Y, which is going to be your axis constraint for your snaps toggle. Okay, that covers the three points that I wanted to talk about. And I just want to finish up by talking about two more things. And the first of which is going to be this display rubber band toggle. This is an optional visual toggle. And what that's going to do 
is I'm still constrained on my z-axis here. I can grab this vertice and it's going to show me where I'm grabbing from and where I'm snapping to. So in this case, I'll snap to my midpoint. And that, that whole line is going to turn green. So I'll have this gizmo that shows where I'm grabbing from and where I'm snapping to. Alternatively, if I turn that off, what you're going to see is I don't get any line and I just get this movement from vertice to vertice. So when I drag this there, that vertice crosshair is going to turn green. I prefer just to have display rubber band on because it clearly shows where I'm grabbing from and where I'm snapping to and when that snap is confirmed with that green line. And the second thing I want to talk about is this snap to frozen objects toggle. So you notice in the beginning of the video, I had my drawing here of the window frozen. So let's just delete these planes here. And if I freeze that again, just by selecting and right clicking it to freeze, you notice if I don't have snapped frozen objects on, I don't get any of my snap showing up. But if I do turn that on and then just check on 2.5D, I can then snap to this object, even though it's frozen. So that snap to frozen object toggle is very helpful, especially if you're working with the drawing and you don't want that drawing to get misaligned as you are working with it. So those are the essentials of snapping with 3ds Max. If you like this video, you can subscribe to our channel where we release tips, tricks, and tutorials on CG visualization software, including 3ds Max, V-Ray, Rhino, and much more. You can also check out our website, re.school, where we have full courses on modeling, rendering, and other CG visualization topics. There, I teach two courses called Intro to Product Modeling Part 1 and Part 2, where we take basic techniques such as snapping like this and expand them to build full-fledged product models. So I'll have a link to both our website and my particular courses in the description below. So again, this has been Vinny from Ari, and I hope to see you in another video.